What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Yee Podcast. My name is Parker Smith, CEO of Yee Apparel. I'm joined with By Byron. Byron. <laughs> but what is it? Brian. There it is. And Ben. He got my name right. We are not cutting that. We're keeping it, baby. Yeah, we are. I'm joined with two guys whose names start with B's. I haven't been on this in a while. I don't blame you, though. You're probably a little tired. I'm a little tired. What time did you go to bed last night? I went to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oof. And it is 8.30 right now? I'm hungover, and I had one beer yesterday. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> we were talking about our uh, lack of sleep hangover, if any of you at home has ever experienced that. Um, kind of felt like I was on another planet last night. We were at my bachelor party this weekend in Salt Lake City, Park City, Utah, just outside outside of Salt Lake, and uh, we had a very late flight last night. Some are saying we were actually in Park Park City. Park Park City. Yeah. I am some. That is my that is my city. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, our flight got delayed. We were supposed to leave at 9 p.m. last night, and it got delayed till 9:30. And then when we got on the plane, they said they were having trouble starting one of the engines. And so that that's like, never a good feeling. Did that scare y'all? No, I, I've never been on a flight and then just heard them like just the cockpit door was open and like the captain was just like yelling down to the people below, like telling them what he needed. I've never experienced, maybe it's just cause I'm not usually up there at the front, but it was just weird that they just like had the cockpit door open. He was just like yelling at the people down below. I'm like telling him what's wrong with the engine and stuff. Yeah. I didn't even know that was going on. I was like in my own little world watching a movie uh, while we were waiting to take off. Yeah. I feel like there's two types of people. It's like the people who are just like in the zone with their headphones and like, I don't care what happens. Just let me know when we land. And then there's the people who are like actually like trying to keep up with what's going on with the plane and stuff. Yes. And where's Hayden? He was with us last night. Hayden is um, at home. <laughs> couldn't, <laughs> couldn't hang today. <laughs> Hayden is resting. Um, yes. And yeah. Much needed. He had a long, hard weekend of making sure the trip went well. Yes, he did yeah, a great so. job. Yeah, he did. Yay, Woo! Hayden. Shout out Hayden. Hayden coordinated the whole thing. It's his favorite thing. He love, loves logistics and event planning randomly. Um, I don't know. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. True. I guess it depends on the uh, event. But I asked him if he could uh, set up my bachelor party. He did a great job. So thank you very much. We skied three days, Park City. Mm -hmm. That was a good time. Got some fresh snow mm -hmm. on Saturday night. What's crazy about Park City is th that every single person on the planet uh, was there and they fit them in Park City. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah, it was, it was almost like the line for like getting into a sports game or something like that like it was just that packed on the trails um but either way it was just so much fun good i'm glad y'all had fun i always feel guilty like whenever i'm hosting events that are like about me that's why like a wedding's like my worst nightmare because it's just like i don't know it just <laughs> feels pretentious and like narcissistic to like invite a bunch but it, like as dudes it's just like Guys don't really care. It's just an excuse to like get together and like go ski. Yeah, yeah. So it was fun. I was talking to Amy, my fiance, and she was like, "Did everybody? Did you just feel so loved by everybody? <laughs> and did everybody just give toasts and just just make you feel special?" And I was like, "Guys, don't really do that. It's just like <laughs> yeah. the fact that guys like spent you know like six hundred bucks on a plane ticket and like an Airbnb to just like come hang out for a weekend is like basically them saying like, like I care about you. Let's hang out. You know, oh, that's so true." Versus girls' bachelorette parties, it's like they have to each write like a handwritten letter with like a quill and ink and <laughs> <laughs> a quill. <laughs> Dearest Amelia, yes. Where do I begin? Versus guys are just like, "Sup, dude? You don't want to watch Spider Man?" <laughs> we were talking about being tired just from a late flight, but we got in on Thursday and skied three days in a row, and then of course had the late flight but all that skiing that's tiring in itself it really is my legs are hurting today i could I, actually do another day today if we're being honest wow snowboarders man <laughs> um so we have a guest on today who is it we do it is mr nick luciano Woo! it is a luch it is not loose that that's the like italian pronunciation mm. we'll have to ask him here in a minute yeah we will yeah, he's coming on. We haven't seen him since Yee Yee Day uh, 2021. 
Yep. Uh, so yeah, that should be should be really cool to catch up with him. He hasn't been here, and it's crazy how much has changed in their world in just a year. Yeah. Um, we definitely talk about it all the time. Uh, just the content world or like the uh, overall e-commerce world, just how a year can feel like three years. Yeah. And so just true. for example, I, I haven't even come up on my one year anniversary of moving to Texas, but I mean, every time, just for example, last night we're off the plane in Texas and it's like, wow, this is home. This is awesome. Yep. Like being back. Yeah. It's a weird feeling when your like mind officially transitions that spot where you're sleeping to home. Mm -hmm. you know yeah it's like how long does that really take it took it took a while for me when, once i moved here but now it's like yeah it feels like home home well without further ado we're gonna have nick on hope you guys enjoy it episode 50 halfway episode, to f halfway to 100 halfway to 100 halfway to being a podcast that you should listen to yes <laughs> i always bring up the quote the guy said once the podcast gets to 100 episodes i'll listen because that means that they know how to run it well i started out this one mispronouncing your name so we're not there yet we're not there yet but it takes time we're working on it <laughs> all right here's the episode see y'all all right nick luciano what's up <laughs> you're late i know what the heck man <laughs> as per usual <laughs> <laughs> why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself uh yeah my name is nick luciano i'm 25 years old i am a full-time content creator and entrepreneur you might have seen me on TikTok from Sugar Crash. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Which is the, one of the highest viewed TikToks of all time. Number I, three. I just mm -hmm. tell people it's number one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish it was. It, it's the only one that matters That's in that so top true. five yeah. list there. Yeah. We met uh, Nick last year for Yee Yee Day, first ever Yee Yee Day, which was a blast, which you just asked for directions for the bathroom or we just told him where the bathroom was. And then I was like, he literally right. took a shower in that the bathroom <laughs> yeah. last year. Uh, I remember uh, you had your four wheeler down in like the whole mud pit there, uh -huh. and I have like a video and there's like a live picture with it, and you're just spinning your tires, and the mud is just like in a wave over you. We can yeah. we can put that yeah, picture we'll like, on right here, here? Yeah. something like that, right, right there. there. Cool. Yeah. Well, cool, man. I mean, tell me about like like what's going. How did you get into the the influencer TikTok world to begin with? Yeah, so I guess I'll I'll start from the beginning. Um, I was, I had been doing social media for like 11 years now. So like back before any of this had taken off, like just when like phones had cameras and stuff, I was recording myself doing like, uh, basketball trick shots. Nice. I seen like the first dude perfect video <laughs> and like when they were in their backyard, just throwing the ball like over the house yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, I want to do that. So I set up my little like Android um, on my trash nice. can and uh, I had uh, one of those hoops that you could just kind of like drag around everywhere oh, yeah. and it had no net on it it was just a rim and I was just like <laughs> throwing balls into it and I was hoping I could gain some traction from that never really worked and then uh, from there I I went to school and I was always kind of doing like photography in the background Instagram here and there here and there but I never like went full on into it and then fast forward to three years ago, I was working as an engineer for the army and I downloaded TikTok at my desk cause I was bored. <laughs> and I was like, let's see what this is about. Cause I seen like people on Musical.ly making those like little, like, you know how they hold up their phones and like yeah. do the little lip syncs. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let's see what that is. So and I when was that? That was like three years ago. Okay. Yeah. And then I uploaded a video of me trail riding in Arizona and I seen it got like 30 likes and I had zero followers. So I seen the power of it like right away with the algorithm mm -hmm. and then I just kept posting, posting, posting. It took me a year to get to a hundred thousand followers. And then I just kept grinding for another year and then quarantine hit. And I said, screw it. I'm going to quit my job. I was working from home, quit my job and was pursuing videography and then went viral with sugar crash. And then <laughs> the rest is history. You have so. like such an interesting mix of like the like ranch life and then also like you're super artsy. Yeah. Like, how do you yeah. like balance those two? Uh, it's kind of it's kind of cool because it's like like I like to tell stories through the ranch life and follow trends because like with TikTok in order to gain traction you got to follow the trends. Yeah. So I think that's actually been 
kind of crucial to to my success a little bit is taking those trends and like twisting them and make them a little ranchy a little country so i guess it's a, a good side to be a best of both worlds yeah it's like it's like two different worlds that like you wouldn't like see fitting together that's why mm -hmm. i feel like we all get along so well because it's like it's kind of rare to like like this like country stuff and rodeos and hunting and fishing and outdoors and like just mudding and doing stupid stuff and then also like appreciating like picking up a camera and getting an amazing shot and like understanding uh -huh. how to do that right i remember sitting with brian like i think a year and a half ago before we'd met you mm -hmm. and like your content just always got pushed to the top because it was like this guy's just like doing something different with <laughs> like the ranch life with like just crazy shots where you like you obviously knew what you were doing with like mm. that certain camera yeah like was there a certain point where you like like how did it how did that transition to like from the skits to just the lip dubs i guess mm -hmm. or like that's just that just kind of turned into your niche didn't it yeah like i've had a few different niches on tiktok <laughs> like i've just kind of thrown stuff at the wall um like before before it was like kind of like a little western fashion like transitions and stuff and then i rescued a cat and my cat went viral and it was just cat content <laughs> for a little yeah. bit um and then sugar crash happened and then that niche was where you look at the screen and you you see how well somebody else did a trend mm -hmm. they got millions of likes for doing something else and then you kind of one up them so that kind of started uh, a different trend of seeing how many like you know taking your phone and be like oh this person got three million likes now let's see what i can do yeah and that kind of like everybody was doing that um and then it transitioned to skits and kind of collabing with more artists and, and creators and then uh just going from there you have so. to be really well-rounded i feel like because yeah. you have to be on top of the different trends because like so many different guys would just do their first viral video like you did and mm -hmm. then it's like they're a one-trick pony and it's like well i guess i'll just keep trying to do this and you did and you capitalized on it mm -hmm. but then you were able to like shift your content and then connect with people to like keep it going was it really stressful when you quit your job and and you were like okay like I have to, I have to do this now. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I started, I started my own brand, Luciano Western Wear, and that was kind of paying the bills a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just going to rely on videography to like, you know, projects, weddings, different, you know, equestrian shoots and stuff like that. Um, and then it was a little bit stressful, you know, just because content creation is a, is a business and you never know what, who's going to like approach you you never know what email you're gonna get yeah. so you just really just have to keep grinding and then um in this world too it's like you gotta know how to brand yourself correctly so people will be willing to work with you so yeah it is stressful but it's it's something i like i like the pressure when you quit so. your job did you have like people like how was your support around that decision <laughs> it was uh my mom was about it mm -hmm. she's been about everything i've been doing my dad thought i was crazy <laughs> yeah he's like because i worked for for the army i had yeah. a you know stable a, job a stable job you know would have been a six-figure income by the time of 28 mm -hmm. um and i had benefits at carryover into retirement mm -hmm. and it would have been just cake but I, I just never i never liked following the rules and i i didn't like working for somebody so yeah. i kind of i just wanted to test the limits of working myself so it was it was tough but and you know the creator world not a lot of people like understand what a creator is nowadays because mm -hmm. it's still relatively new what yeah. you can do with it so i really just had to rely on myself mostly when yeah. i first quit yeah. yeah it's a hard thing to understand even like now if you really think about it it's just like where are these numbers coming from of like these views and these likes and these comments it's just still so strange to me and i've been a part of it for a while now but to explain to someone from a different generation too. Like we kind of grew up with it. Gen Z is now really growing up with it. It's gonna be completely normal. But to explain to like a parent or a grandparent about like how a lip dub works and just like, okay, you're not seeing it, but your lips are moving to it. <laughs> and this is getting views and you're going to monetize this and make a living off of it instead of just like the parent, like my, my friend's mom the other day was like, I was explaining to her my job and she was like, so do you have a degree in that? And I was like, well, no. And she was like, but how do you do it uh -huh. if you don't have a college education in it? And I was like, you just kind of learn it. I don't know. I feel like that's just like a new thing for our generation. 
Yeah. YouTube University. That's what I tell people (laughs) is where I learned everything. I mean, even you look in like other fields, like uh, one one of the cool things is I I was an engineer before I Mm -hmm. came into the content world myself. So I always think of it when I look at you, I'm like, oh yeah, he was an engineer too. Like there, maybe it's the creativity side of an engineer, but like even when I was in engineering, my teachers wouldn't tell me that much. I'd look a lot of it up on Google or YouTube. Like the YouTube university is a real thing. It is. Yeah. Like even with building my own business through all this, like I had to YouTube how to build a Shopify store. Mm-hmm. I had to YouTube what printers to use. I had to YouTube how to like buy tape and boxes. Like mm-hmm. it was like everything was just self-taught. Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, I have a degree in like, I always tell people too, like I have a degree in problem solving. There you, you know go. What I, mean? I like that. It's not, yeah, engineering is like, you can go into whatever field, but it ultimately teaches you how to solve problems and you face problems every day. By the way, talked about building your own brand and everything. You got a Luciano hat on right mm-hmm. now. That's that's a sick logo. Thank you. Thank like, you. That's a really sick logo. I, I have uh, one of your hats back at home. I should have worn it today, but it's the black one with the orange uh, logo. Oh, yeah. But the yeah, one. that's pretty sick. Yeah, it's like um, it's something I always wanted to do. And it's like a brand based around positivity within the Western industry. Yeah. So the slogan is Bulletproof Mindset, Strive for Excellence. Um, which is an industry that is like, can be a little bit cynical and just like the cowboy mindset can just be like kind of cynical about life. So it's mm -hmm. kind of, it's kind of different. Yeah. It's like, you know, I wanted people to wear something like, like I'm not the most cowboy. I'm not the most ranchy. Like you said, I have a creative side to me. That's like, kind of like looked down upon. It's like, if you're not doctoring cows and roping all day, that you're like not a part of the lifestyle. And, you know, I wanted people to wear something that you know has a slogan on it and makes them feel good makes them feel a part of something you know what i mean definitely so that's what i wanted to bring to the table with the brand and it's resonated a lot with a lot of people i also like sell wristbands with the slogan on it and people say man your your slogan helps me so much every day people have got it tattooed on them that's that's crazy. awesome yeah i so. think it's cool that you said you have a like a degree in problem solving. I once heard someone say that they have a PhD in persistence, which is like <laughs> kind of like along those lines yeah. mm-hmm. where it's like, they just really can't be stated enough how much we're like, for instance, my middle brother, Tyler worked a year at compass bank and was living his nine to five. And like, it was a stable income and he had benefits and all that stuff. But then he, he was just like, I just like, I would rather just go do something else. And even if it's not, like going to bring me like a lot of success or Granger a lot of success. It's like, it's just, it's more fun to just like bet on yourself and to just like be competitive and problem solve. And he'd rather fail doing that than just like live that nine to five, like every other person. Yeah. Which is a lot easier said than done, but yeah, I hate comfortability. Like if like uh, my buddy Roy always says, he says greatness comes at the end of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And like the more you can, push towards the end of your comfort zone and like kind of put yourself out there like you're gonna do great things so and it starts with just like like people like to see the end result but then they don't see like that tiny step forward where you just googled like how to have a website how to sell something online and then Mm -hmm. it just kind of dominoes i feel like so many people like they want to do something like whether it's like create a shopify store or whatever and then their initial thought is like well i don't know how to do that and they almost forget how big of a tool the internet is yeah on just learning things yeah for Uh, those listening if you don't know what shopify is it's just the uh the platform that you sell it's a platform that you can sell products online so like we have shop the yee yee store is a shopify store and that's technically how we uh take money send the product and get it into your hands and run the business Mm kind of piggybacking off what you were saying uh roy's like favorite quote from a minute ago Mm -hmm. um i i always think of your comfort zone as if you're not pushing the limits of it then you're really limiting yourself just Mm -hmm. in many ways so i like to think of i i'd never say going out of your comfort zone i say expanding my comfort zone Mm because when you push that limit you get to another place where you can do uh just you're you're more comfortable with yeah. things how have you seen your comfort zone increase over the last three years and like because this is like nothing to be on a podcast now <laughs> yeah. but the first time in front of a camera it must have been like a little nerve ra- like racking yeah it is it's it's kind of it's kind of strange like i i was a 
instructor in college and I would give lectures to like 600 kids and like that was easy you know so that kind of expanded my comfort zone but sometimes when you sit in, like the first time sitting in front of a lens like professionally mm. like I don't know what it is about a lens like you know I've had to learn how to like be more coherent and get my message across in front of a lens and even just public speaking helps with that and even making TikToks just yeah. like informative TikToks helps you with your thought process and how to convey your message so my my comfort zone has expanded in front of a lens um especially going out to events and meeting people you know pr work stuff like that um so yeah that's the biggest thing that that's happened with that we had ginger billy on and he was talking about the difference between like content creators that can do awesome stuff like like once it's edited and videoed versus like actual stand-up comedians and like that's the direction that he wants to go with it and he's like it's really interesting to see the people who are, may be really good in front of a lens but then like aren't able to translate that in front of an audience and like i kind of feel the opposite of you i think that it would be pretty difficult for me to go up or i think i'd be more nervous to go up in front of 600 people and give a lecture mm -hmm. versus like being on a TikTok that you know is going to get like at least a stadium's worth of views like that's so weird to think about so yeah. like in your mind that's like i was i think i was at like some game the other day or like you were at the houston rodeo recently right mm -hmm. well no oh, you were at some, the, um, in dallas right the the american yeah, okay this past weekend or Arlington. like or anytime Arlington, you're yeah. in an arena or a stadium and it's just like a bad TikTok for you would fill like two or three of these stadiums and it's just uh -huh. weird to think about that many <laughs> eyeballs versus like if you're doing that in person you know do you ever think about that i do i actually do because uh, i was talking to roy the other day and he's like man my numbers are like nothing compared to y'all's and he has sixty thousand followers <laughs> and we were at the we were in okc and that stadium fits thirty thousand people it wasn't packed but i was like dude you have two arenas worth of these people behind you that have like chose to hit the follow button. Yep. Like you got to put it in perspective. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not millions like the rest of us have, but like when you're doing something like that, you got to put it in perspective. Like even I always tell people like, like you said, when, when something flops or like only does like 40 K views, like that's, that would be equivalent <laughs> to like an arena watching you like, yeah perform or like do your act mm -hmm. that's that two sense. hockey arenas yeah because a typical one is less than twenty thousand. that's crazy that comparison just kills you yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well i was thinking about it earlier i looked to see what your sugar crash video was at it's at 200 282 million views mm -hmm. that's like almost the entire country <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i think like nightly news gets like two million views or something so yeah it's just crazy to put it into perspective how many that is 141 yeah. times what nightly news gets yeah, <laughs> yeah that's insane I, the whole like like what's the population of the u.s like 300 million mm -hmm. so it's like the whole almost the whole u.s <laughs> but i know it's not the whole u.s uh -huh. yeah it's like international a, a good majority of india follows me <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah i look at my instagram analy analytics and it's like I forget what city it is, but it's like the top four cities are not here. <laughs> you have to do a meet and greet in India. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So what are, is India just like randomly a top like five country? Like if, if there were top five countries, how would you like rank them in terms of who's viewing your videos? It's definitely, well, it's like US is like 30%. Okay. And then it's Canada and then India. So yeah, so that that's just like top three in the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then the rest of the world. There, it's just miscellaneous for that um, other yeah. section of it. <laughs> Europe is pretty good too. I would probably rank, rank Europe four or five in there. Mm. Nice. So what mm. is going on with the Trader Gang? Can you explain the Trader Gang for people just to keep everybody up to date? And yeah. Into into what's going on now? Yeah. So Trader Gang um, is now Trader Company, but Trader Gang was basically the five of us. It was Zach, Blake, Gatlin, um, Jared, and me. And we came together uh, in February of last year to do our first meet and greet. But before that, we planned like a collab to do, um, just making funny Tratter videos. And for those of you who don't know like what Tratters is, it's basically a, a trend that Blake started with little toy tractors and in a, in a baby voice called Tratters. Yeah. And they were probably the fastest country creators I've seen to hit a million. Like, probably took them two, three weeks, mm -hmm. if that. And that little baby voice was so 
it's just so funny it's to me. so it's yeah. funny like, to me it's, too. It's, I, it's true is the thing because mm-hmm. like most like three-year-olds wouldn't be able to like pronounce their c's or like three to five-year-old like toddler age yeah so they wouldn't be able to say the word tractor uh-huh. like they actually would be saying tratter yeah exactly which is, so it's just that much more hilarious because it's actually like true yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not like they were just like mimicking like a baby or anything like that it's mm-hmm. like yeah, yeah if like and people are like i don't know how to do the voice and i've stu- i've been around these guys so long <laughs> you i can know do it like good. The C, every I've heard it. every c is a t and every uh g is a d <laughs> 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 so like like uh um like the, they always say pretty f- freaking cool which is pretty freaking tool yeah pretty tool yeah but uh anyway so i met blake like way before any of this he had forty thousand, i had ninety thousand, and he was actually an ambassador for luciano oh nice so then he went crazy viral with Tratters. Then we collab. Fast forward to our collab. Um, and then over the summer, we did like a little meet and greet tour, you know, kind of fairs, festivals, Mid America music, music Festival. Nice. Granger. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, and then this past, like the end of summer, we kind of had some like personal like goals. Like a lot of people had different personal goals. So some people, and there's no hard feeling. Some people think we have beef or whatever, but we don't. Um, we just kind of like make fun of ourselves on TikTok and people just, it's just funny what people believe on the internet. Yeah. Um, but fast forward to that, uh, Blake and I said, you know, we've come too far with Tratter gang to like quit now. So we were brand rebranded the Tratter company and we've taken Tratter company to make the Tratter house, which houses us and a bunch of other creators that come into the house. And then we take those creators to different events and kind of help them build up their content stuff like that so how many people are in this house when you say house Mm y'all are all literally living in this house together right yeah yeah it's crazy so the main people in the house are uh me blake roy andrew and yeah those are like the main four right now and then uh, a lot of uh, our team works remote so what yeah. what has been the best part of living in the house and the worst part about living in the house? Do you, the best part is like because it's just if you guys are listening, just look up the Chatter House on TikTok <laughs> and it's just chaos. It just looks <laughs> like there's forty people like in the living room, and I'm just like, how do they get anything done? How do you what, sleep? <laughs> how do you sleep? Dude, it reminds me of being in college again. Nice, like that's awesome. You, we don't sleep, like. Like 3 a.m. is the normal bedtime, which yeah. kind of sucks because I got to control myself a little bit. But like the best part is the camaraderie. Like it's it's we're all brothers. Like we have a genuine friendship and care for each other, which is really nice. I always wake up every morning and I hear people laughing in the kitchen and making jokes. I'm like, yeah, I get to like do this with my best friends. Yeah, that's the best part of it. The worst part of it is like Caden farts a lot <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't put away his dishes. Yes, we experienced that yeah, this weekend. Yeah. Ten oh dudes my gosh. in uh-huh. a house, there's yep. going to be a lot of toots. That yeah, is, there's yep. a lot of toots. This is a, a that's lot. why we have a candle in here yeah. right now. <laughs> the but yeah, like just like the general housekeeping and things, and um, I'm kind of used to it, but it's like, I don't know, we, ca- we try to keep our faith at the center of it too, which kind of yeah. helps us guide everything along. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you have trouble like, like are you like a habitual person where you like to go to bed at a certain time, wake up at a certain time, and then like have like your productivity during the day? Do you ever have to go to a Starbucks to get away to like brainstorm? Because like people don't realize that it takes a lot of thought and creativity for these mm-hmm. videos. Do you have trouble like, or do you just go close the door and it's fine? I well, we we have a designated workspace where we've kind of blocked off the dogs from coming to, so like, <laughs> nice. they can't distract yeah. us. So like that's where we set our our workspace and I'm a very habitual person. Like I have to have a routine or else I go crazy Me too. Mm-hmm. So it has been difficult some days, but we've kind of, we've had to rework the routine a few times. So we said 9am every day, but the boys couldn't get up. Okay. 10. <laughs> <laughs> so now we start at 10 and from 12 to one, we do all the housekeeping and logistics and stuff like that. And we do our meetings. And then from one on, we make our content and from building a business and being content creators, you have to separate those two different brains. Like one's a business brain and one's a content brain. Mm, yeah. And if you burn out the business brain, then your creator side kind of lacks. Mm, so we figured yeah. that out pretty pretty fast. So 
and what got us here was content. So we got to focus on the content. Content is king. So um, it's a constant restructure and we work rework every day. But that's mm. kind of one of the biggest things we figured out so far. I've never heard someone say it like that, dude. I, mm-hmm. I feel the exact same way. It's so interesting. Uh, like we talk about that with Granger and Earl Dibbles Jr. all the time. And then like we come here, we're building Yee Yee and we're building this business and we're putting all the money into the marketing and to the product and then to like how to like do the email marketing and have the website look a certain way. And then like we all got together the other day and we're just like, let's brainstorm an Earl Dibbles video. We don't, we haven't even done that in six mm-hmm. months. And then it got like 2 million views or something, which is like scrub numbers compared mm-hmm. to Nick Luciano. But, <laughs> <it's true. laughs> but it's so true. Cause then all of a sudden you like, you just like go down this rabbit hole of business stuff. Like I'm mm-hmm. sure you've done before and you're like, I haven't even created, like, what am I doing? I haven't even yeah. like made a video in a while. Yeah, exactly. That's like the video I made the other day uh, was I actually got like a good spark of creativity and it feels good. It kind of like refuels you a little bit, but yeah, you get lost in the meetings and the money and the analytics Mm -hmm. and then your creative side just lacks, but it comes with the territory, you know, when you're trying to do both. Yeah. And I'm sure it's, it kind of helps mentally to like have other guys who can relate and like, Mm -hmm. instead of just like getting in your own head and then just being surrounded by people who work nine to fives and have no idea how to relate to like have those guys there that are like, yeah, dude, I feel the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Do you ever make a video and then go show like five different people before you post it and say, is this good content? All the time. Yeah. All the time. I suck at captions and Caden is the best at captions. (laughs) So I'm like, I just handed my phone and just caption this. (laughs) Nice. And then, uh, you know, Blake is helps really with the, the skits and the creativeness. And I just help with like making it look pretty. So it's kind of like a good dynamic with everybody. And then, uh, Roy also helps with some of the, the skit ideas. So nice. Yeah. And he kind of like, I know we do a lot of dancing now too, which we've kind of like molded our, like you got to do what works on TikTok. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So a lot of people like they give us crap for doing the dances or whatever, but they're fun. And, um, uh, Caden is really good with like structuring them to, to make sure they, they get traction. So he comes up with dances and the, the captions and half the time I look at Caden, I go, this is the dumbest idea I've ever seen. <laughs> and then I hate to admit it, but every video that I've said is dumb that I let Caden take point on has at least like 2 million views. Just crushes. Yeah. They just crush it. Yeah. So, hmm. and that's part of being a leader too. You just gotta let your team do their, do their job. Yeah. We're yeah. going to go to break and we'll be right back. All right, we're going to talk about our Listener of the Week now. This week's Listener of the Week is brought to you by the Yee Yee Apparel Spring Launch. It will be March 18th, a couple Fridays from now. It's coming and up. It is coming up. Oh, I didn't know you were going to do that, Ben. That was smooth. You that can was. get this shirt if you like it, or if you don't, there will be other shirts. And but Parker Parker's shirt. There will be this shirt as well. Wow. But this week's Listener um, of the Week, we're going to kick it to Nick. Okay, this week's listener of the week is Lou Brown. Woo! Let's go, Lou. Lou. Go, Lou. What'd she say? She said, you guys are pretty entertaining. Oh, thank you, wow. Lou. Wow. <laughs> that was sweet. Thank Honestly. You for the, thank you for the backhanded compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Not super entertaining, but, but I mean. There's no and in that. It doesn't say pretty and entertaining. Oh, so, just, uh, she. I think she meant to put Yeah, it must have been a typo there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> um, well, Lou, you get from us uh, snaps from Nick Luciano. Nice. That was what he was giving you earlier. It's like we're in a poetry session. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Raising the roof. Yeah. I had the phone in his hands. So I, can, I had to make some noise. <laughs> yep. All right. We're going to go to fantasy Wait, rankings. I got to ask not. about the Applebee's commercial. How did that happen? Oh, tell, that, tell us about it. Like the, uh, the Walker Hayes song? Yes. Oh, well, we got contacted by some uh, media company who wanted to license it from from us nice. and basically said, yeah, you can do it. And then I thought we were going to have like like a majority of the section or like at least because it's a long dance and we got the shortest part. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally just Woo. That's all it is. <laughs> what so, was it like seeing it, though, for the first time on TV? It was pretty cool. Um, that was the first time actually like being on tv it was pretty frittin tool pretty frittin tool <laughs> um and uh yeah and it was cool because it was such a glimpse of me and me and blake were on it and um 
you know, I got so many like texts and snaps like you're on TV, you're on TV. And then they, I think they played it during one of the NFL commercials too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the football games. So that's pretty cool. I remember it just like popping up and I, it was the, I I saw it on like your story or something that you were going to be on the commercial, but I hadn't seen it actually on TV. And then I finally saw it like during a game or something like that. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> Just like so hyped. I mean, that was one of the, probably the biggest commercials towards yeah. the end of last year. It yeah. was on For all sure. the time. Yeah, and it just kind of like happened like because his Applebee's was like in it. I don't yeah. think Walker like like did that intentionally. Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of spun into like yeah. an Applebee's commercial. Well, that that's like TikTok right mm-hmm. there in a nutshell. Like it started off and then I, I don't know i think maybe one of his choreographers created a dance for it and then it just blew up on tiktok and then like you were talking about earlier just hopping on the trends yeah uh that's how people get the views how they grow and mm. that it just spirals from a viral video and then it's thousands of viral videos of literally just the same dance and then all of a sudden it's the subject of a commercial basically yeah it's insane. It, especially like talk about the trend going on now with like the phone in the mirror. Oh yeah. You don't mean <laughs> nothing at all. We we like, gotta show that. We gotta show that. Yeah, we'll add that one in. And I was like, what what is it? Yeah. It's like these trends just come out of nowhere. <laughs> and you never know where that's gonna go. Mm-hmm. But it's just crazy. Who comes up with these? I don't know. I don't know. The Trotter House. The Trotter House. <laughs> <laughs> True. All right, so we can get started with our fantasy rankings. Uh, For those of you who may be listening or watching for the first time, we go around and we pick a category, and you have to give your top three answers. You give one at a time, and once an answer is said, it's off the board, so it cannot be said again. So this week's fantasy rankings is going to be the top walkout songs if you're thinking for a baseball game or sports game or anything like that, but... We'll kick it to Nick for his first pick. Okay. Like, just one right now? Just one. one. Just, yep. Yeah. Okay. And it can be in order of, like, you're going to want to do the best ones yeah. first. So it doesn't get taken by someone else. Okay. Um, The one that, like, I love the most that we came out to, like, basketball was uh, um, the clean version of, of Click by, like, mm. Kanye West and all that. Yeah. Mm. Ain't nobody messing with my Click. That yeah. Was, and drake cool. too right yeah like I, f- I forget who was on that one but yeah that's a good yeah. one that that like era of music it just like you you look at like in modern times like collaborations on like tiktok it was that but it was just like five different like superstars in like the hip-hop world or like mm-hmm. they're even like in the country space they got into it a bit like you look at there there was like a jason aldean song where he had like luke bryan and eric church mm-hmm on, so it's just three mega superstars yeah. on one like collaboration, and that that was one of those songs. Yeah, it just went like crazy. I remember when that came out; everybody was so hyped for it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one, Brian. Uh, I'm gonna go with Thunderstruck, ACDC. Mm. Oh, that's a that given. That was one of mine. <laughs> there you go. I mean, every sports team had someone walking out to Thunderstruck. So yeah, it was always like the number three hitter. Yep. <laughs> have you ever Coming played the, the game Thunderstruck? I have. Yes, it's no fun. No, not fun it? at all. It, it's a beer chugging game. Oh. But you basically chug beer until they say thunder again in the song. So at the beginning, they say thunder a lot. Oh, But yeah. then if you get caught when they start the first verse, you're like, you're done for. Oh, wow. It's it's bad. It is. That doesn't sound <laughs> Brian, I, I have, Brian looks like he's getting PTSD <laughs> from it. I, I really do. Like, I have flashbacks from that game. Like... Don't miss college for that reason. All right, Definitely my number not. one pick for best walkout song is Levels by Avicii. Mm. That's a good mm. one. That's a good one. Best song of all time. That was it. That was, yeah, that, was there it. that was really nice. Thank you. We need to have Hayden play it on his flutophone. I feel like yes. that would be good. Yep. <laughs> have you ever heard it called a flutophone, a recorder? No, i never. Hayden pulled that out like a week or two ago. And I've I was seen like, that on <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> I've never heard the flutophone. All Man, right. What you got? My number one pick is going to be Enter Sandman. Mm. Mm. Just an all around classic song. Uh, our University of Vir- no, is it Virginia or Virginia? I think it's Virginia Tech. That's their walkout song for football. Couldn't tell you. I don't watch hockey football. Uh, mm. yeah. uh. Well, I'm an ACC guy. 
you're more so Big Ten, right? Where are you from? Maryland. Nick? Maryland. Yeah. Maryland. I didn't know that. Yeah. Big Ten guy here. But you did go to North Texas. Yeah. I started right? in Maryland. Then okay. Then to North Texas. Mm. Yeah. Famous okay. for the fake fair catch. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There you go. That's the only only thing we got really, <laughs> really coming to us. <laughs> what but you got yeah. for number two, Nate? Um, My number two one might be like kind of like underground like off the charts a little bit but i mean people do play it they just played it at the the rodeo the other day but it's 300 violin orchestra mm. i don't know if you know that one yeah, yeah. it's 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 pretty pretty raw yeah that that's, that's kind of like if you know you know kind of song yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right my next one i'm gonna do god's gonna cut you down johnny cash wow gets it's very on brand gets of you people going right there. these are definitely classics mm-hmm. very on brand of you <laughs> Number two, best walk up song. Is it walk out or walk up? E- either. Either one. Uh, it's walk up if you're talking about baseball, but if you're thinking of a concert or a whole team running out in football, that's walk out. Wow. So walk out, <laughs> I was walk expecting up. that explanation. That same, concise, same idea, though. Thank you. Um, okay, number two, I'm going to go with Crazy Train. Mm, that's Very a classic. Very rock oriented. Yes. Um, I grew up in Boston. And that was the Celtics song that they played right before the tip off. Why are all the favorite walkout walk up songs rock? Just is that just like rock. the American pump up? Like it gets just the, the classic going. American pump up. Mm-hmm. Well, and click f- isn't rock. Nick's first pick. Yeah, but yeah. I'm just thinking like in general, it just seems like rock kind of owns that category. But I guess yeah. I guess hip hop mm-hmm. does too. Yeah. And in yeah. 20 years, I bet it's not going to be hardly any rock. I yeah. bet not. It'll be Applebee's by Walker Hayes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. that's gonna be a classic hopefully <laughs> what you got ben all right my second pick is gonna be also acdc shoot to throw shoot to throw so that if uh if you've been to a granger concert here recently that is the song that plays right before he walks out so you if you go to a show you'll know what you see there it's mm-hmm. uh it's something special for sure <laughs> nick my number three one is along the, the hip hop lines again, but it's uh is Blood on the Leaves by Kanye West. Man, you really yeah. were a high school basketball player. I was, right? yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I remember that from my pregame <laughs> yeah. mix too. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. The drop the drop in that song yeah. is like like when I was warming up in high school basketball, yep. that's when I wanted to dunk. Yep. On the drop. Yeah. Can you dunk? I used to be able to. Not anymore. Dang. Been living in the Trader House too long. <laughs> <laughs> It'll do that to you. Yeah. Um, All right. What you got? Bro? My last one is switching it up here. It's gonna be "Put On" by Jeezy and mm. Kanye. There you go. Just a classic. Dang, we got Put a lot of Kanye. City. That's yeah. right. Picks there. I'm gonna go with a little bit of a new, uh, a newer song. I'm gonna go with a uh, split by Tiesto and the Chainsmokers. That is Honestly, one of my top workout songs. That song gets me really hyped. <laughs> There's like four words in the whole song, but like you don't need the words. Yeah. <laughs> you, you really, really don't. don't. No. Just the beat. <laughs> you just need the beat. <laughs> you just need the beat. It sounds like a, some kind of nightclub slogan. <laughs> <laughs> that should be Club Yee Yee's slogan. Have okay, we talked about so Club Yee? Nick, <laughs> Nick, so our shippers back there, uh, <laughs> Matt and Stu really like lead the charge in shipping morale in our distribution warehouse <laughs> over there because it gets a little monotonous. So uh, they they were doing power hours for one hour of the day. They would play like EDM mashups back there. And then that's just kind of like compiled to like they now have speakers and there's hanging speakers in there with like amazing bass. <laughs> and so they just call it Club Yee Yee. <laughs> And like Stu will be coming out of the warehouse yelling, like literally he's coming out of a club and then have to like lower his voice over here to the brand side. <laughs> what was it Stuart said the other day? He like opened the door. I don't remember what he said, but he was just like yelling something. <laughs> and then I was like, Stu, like, you don't have to yell, dude. Like, it's okay. <laughs> he's like, where can I get some extra water? <laughs> We're all out of water back there. Yeah. So Brian has like these amazing like lights and LED lights and we have like a fog machine. So we're going to like set up some type we're of gonna skit. We're going to do a skit in there sometime, but... <laughs> oh yeah, gosh. I walked into the warehouse one day and it looked like that. That's when we got awesome. on Brian's phone right there. That's crazy. So what do we? What's the slogan? All you need is the beat. You just need the beat. You just, you need, just the need the beat. Okay. Just need the beat. Club Yee. You just, just need, need the, the beat. beat. <laughs> That'll be a shirt here recently or here in a bit. All right, I gotta cap it off with my final pick, the classic, 
Cotton Eye Joe. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be, again, kind of an underground pick. More of a, you know, wedding kind of song. But uh, I, I've heard song? it. I, I feel like there's just all those, like, line dances oh, okay. usually. Yeah. Um, Are you a line dance guy, Nick? I like to line dance. Okay. Yeah. Really I like to line dance, two-step, half-step. I can see it. All For sorts sure. of stepping. Yeah. But Cotton Eye Joe. That's going to get the people's attention. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's true. Content, baby. That's right. Um, anything exciting coming up for Chartico, for Nick, anything you can share? Yeah. Um, we are, um, things we can share is, uh, we are attending Houston rodeo. So nice. we'll be there doing a booth visit with, uh, boot barn. And, uh, we recently got sponsored by Ariat. So nice. I saw that. Yeah. So we got like a big sponsorship on board. Um, and then. Yeah, we're just kind of rolling with making content, and um, there's a lot of other things, but um, they're not like concrete right now. But yeah, can just you give any like, hints? Um, just basically like bigger collabs. Nice, nice. Mm. So love to hear. It. Yeah, that's what people love to see at the Trader House. They ne- they never know who's gonna roll through there. Yeah, that's so, cool. Where can yeah. people keep up with you? Find more about you. Um, pretty much all my socials. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, it's all at the Nick Luciano. That's TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter is Nick underscore Luciano. And then Snapchat, ND Luciano underscore 21. That's where Snapchat's where the, that's where the behind the scenes stuff is. Okay. It's fun. We'll, yeah. we'll link all that below and yeah. uh, we'll, we'll get all the Tratter House socials too. Yeah. Tratter Co. and Tratter House. Yeah. Tratter Co. is just Tratter Co. and TikTok and then Tratter Company on Instagram and then Tratter House on TikTok or Tratter House on Instagram and The Tratter House on TikTok. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah. We'll see you again at uh, Yee Yee Day, I think. If you're oh, coming yeah. by. I'm coming for sure. Sweet. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah, talking about. I'm getting about. dirtier this time. Oh, Sweet. Let's go. <laughs> All right. We'll see y'all next week. Actually, they won't see us next week. <laughs>